Hello there, and as usual, I'm Aaron from Last Stand Gamers, and welcome. So today, I managed to finish a number of projects that I've been working on for the Steam Workshop and you guys. Now, the first of which is the Edge of Tomorrow style dropship. We've actually got this thing powered. I took it for a temporary test flight before, and I'll take it for another with you guys, as well as showing you the added features to it. We've got doors, we've got ramps, we've got pistons, we've got things that retract and make it just really exciting to have a mess around with. So I'll show you them all today. As you can see, we saw the door at the front. We've also got the door at the back. Sadly, it couldn't be as rounded as the one in the movie. I was really trying to go for that, but every design I tried just wouldn't work. It wouldn't press down on the ground correctly. Now let's go up to the front and we'll enter through this door. Now one of the priorities was that this design was to try to keep it a realistic sort of scale as well as contain as many features as possible. And the mods have allowed me to do that in quite a number of ways. And I've lined up all the buttons here so they're going to be corresponding to what they actually do and it's going to be a really simple layout. So first off we're going to close this door on the left, that's going to respond to that button. That door will close there. The middle door or the middle button here is controlled by that one there. And you can see that's lowering down at the back. And I'll show you that in all in third person later on. We'll bring that up. And now landing gears and vertical takeoff controls. As you can see out the window, we've got the vertical takeoff control are controlled there. But that's not going to work for the moment because we're attached down to the ground. And everything kind of has a, a backup safety sort of setting. So if something's locked into one position, it means it's going to try not to actually snap off. And here we have the door control. So you can actually lower the ramps. And you may notice I've sped a lot of things up because you guys were saying things were too slow. And you'd be killed in an instant with it and then this would lower down but this is only meant to be lowered down in a drop scenario in this case we'd hit the floor but if that does happen i've made it so these take the brunt of the impact and you do not damage the actual whole system or your people inside so we'll close that back up and that is pretty much most of the interior that i'm going to show you i'm going to go and show you the exterior as well as some of the interesting items that i've decided to build onto that first off let's show the controls and let's have a look at that back door now, when I was messing around with this back door, I had a number of different problems. So first off, we'll try and break that open. Now, let's hit number seven, and that's going to bring the door down. And you notice the first issue that I kind of ran into, we're too high off the ground. And the real problem here is, how, how am I going to get that to ground level? How, how am I going to bring that to ground level? And then I thought of public transport, buses, they tend to use a system where if like an old lady or a pram's trying to get on board, to use the hydraulics to lower it down so if we move on to the next tab here i've actually prepared these up for it so we've got a reverse and we've got an on off setting so you simply hit that it's going to lower the back of the ship down and when it's at the level you want you simply lock it and turn it off and as you can see we've lowered the rear of the ship and the function of this is just really good because it means if we hop outside now there we go and we open up this door we'll come on out and we'll actually have a look it means that even if the surface level of the planet is like kind of uneven, unsteady, we can actually still get things on and off our ship and into the back. And I'm going to probably build a few different variants. There's a cargo variant perhaps without these seats in here. So you can just have a number of crates and you could be wandering around freely in here. We've also got the button at the back here that I've added on just to close up the ramp. And in the cargo variant, this will make more sense. You can bring up the ramp there. And we can also lower it back down. But just I love the idea of just lowering these rear pistons to get that sort of effect rather than bringing the whole ship towards the ground that you can do. And I'll show you that in a second. So if you happen to want to actually enter through the front doors, you could do it the other way around. So what we're going to do is we're going to hit two and we're going to bring the pistons back up to full extent. And we're then going to switch over to this menu, close up the back door like so. And then we're going to switch over to landing gear style controls. Now this is where it gets a little bit more complicated. So you can see we can bring it down to this level and we can bring it back up. And you can also lock that in place so these doors on the side are a bit more of a viable option. But let's actually unlock these landing gears, switch to vertical takeoff mode and I'll show you that function itself. Now one of the questions about these thrusters was how am I going to get them to power the ship if they're not actually connected? Well that's very simple, I'm going to use them as a sort of boosting system. I'm going to press a certain switch and use them as a power boost when I need them. And I don't, I've not got them set to full power, so they're not going to just blast all my parts off. So let's unlock our landing gears by pressing 6. You can see they've been locked. We're going to retract landing gears in. Landing gears retracting, and as that's happened, we're going to turn our ship into vertical takeoff, or sort of horizontal flight mode. And since we're in space, we don't really need to use that vertical takeoff, but we can. And I'll just show you a little bit of a jet forward very shortly. I'm just going to bring it up into position, and... With a simple little bit of power, you can see that we're on overload. We can actually fly this ship pretty well. And since it's got so many moving parts, I was actually amazed that it actually flies 
this well and in this sort of situation as well and then you, all you have to do is if you want to come to a slot you can actually just disable number three and it'll turn itself around so let's actually head back towards the platform area that is over there and you can feel a little bit of pull just because the center of the ship's balance is kind of a little bit off but it's quite controllable and you could use this quite easily the only problem that I had was I couldn't add more power without actually ruining the shape and the feel of the ship. So we're actually coming in pretty fast now and we'll just disable them. And I've got very little power stopping us so we'll just bank it around and we'll start to come into vertical takeoff mode as we come in around. It's just so graceful as it flies. And as we come into this position we're just going to boost forward just a little bit. A little bit of a three. There we go. And the problem was, another problem that I tried to add is I wanted to keep the shape as smooth as possible without losing any of the feel. And that meant I had to have a lack of thrusters in different areas. So inertia down is on. Let's lower it down to the ground. And let's try getting it over there. We might have to turn back into horizontal flight mode for this because hovering probably not going to help us too much. And bring that down. And Aaron's pressing every single button but the button he wants. There we go, there's the button. I'm going to bring that down to the lower sort of level. We'll switch back over to thrusters and we'll jet back over into position and then we can land this thing. Put the landing gears. So let's give it a little bit of a boost, please. A little bit of a boost and that should glide us into position quite nicely. Maybe a little bit more. And there we go. I'll just cut it down here. Switch to landing. Bring the thrusters into position. It just takes a little bit of time and a little bit of patience. And I've left the door open by the look of it as well. I'll have to close that on the console. And as we're coming down, we're going to retract our landing legs. Landing legs retracting. Perfect. And we're just going to touch down a little bit hard, but the piston's going to help spring it back into position. Press 6. And now we're locked in. And we're actually ready to offload whatever cargo that we may have aboard. So let's just pretend we've got to offload a number 7. So number seven is going to offload that into that position. We're going to switch onto our lower ramp sort of settings on the next tab. We could even use number three on the camera. We could actually see people getting in and out of the ship at the back. We'll switch back off number three though. Back to that. And then we can actually see how level we are when we're bringing it down. So bring the back door down. And a bit more. And that'll be good. And then we can unload our cargo. I'd like to thank you guys for watching, and remember this is going to be up on the Steam Workshop, and hopefully it's going to inspire you to build some quite interesting sort of vertical takeoff dropship style designs. Now I just really love the idea of having lots of doors, lots of functions on a small ship, and turn it into some sort of large ship design. Now any of the mods that are on this as well are going to be in the description below, so feel free to rip this ship apart, have a bit of an experiment around, and I'll see you next time.